Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, this overseas operation bill, as it currently stands, is frankly damaging to our armed forces as it remain as it removes the protection of the law from many who have suffered injustice while serving our country, and it means uh, war crimes may go unchallenged and be dragged into the international criminal courts. So, as it stands, it's bad for our international reputation and indeed for those who so gallantly protect our country. Because, unfortunately, uh, this bill will stop those who've got legitimate cases of negligence, bullying, and worse against the Ministry of Defence, over six years old, whilst at the same time turning a blind eye to cases of war crimes and torture over five years old, all in the name of reducing the number of so-called vexatious cases and if we turn to those uh, uh, supposedly vexatious cases, there have been a thousand in the case of Iraq uh, in the last 17 years. And of those, 330 have been settled. In other words, the government's paid up and accepted liability. 414 remain ongoing. In other words, the government hasn't applied for them to be struck out as being vexatious. And 217, only 217 of a 1,000, have been withdrawn or struck out. And many of these have been unmeritorious as opposed to vexatious, by which I mean they've been poorly pleaded or there's been errors of law. And that's no surprise because the government has made savage cuts to legal aid and many soldiers don't have law degrees and are traumatised from the experience uh, that they're bringing a case about. So, in fact, when you look at the number of these unmeritorious cases over the 17 years, they're you know, about 10, uh, which is less than the number of cases that get rejected in court that the government have put forward. So perhaps it should put its own house in order. And let's also remember, in terms of the courts at the moment, they won't hear uh, historic cases, a uh, uh, case of historic facts, unless they pass the test of being equitable. In, a, in other words, fairness requires it. So we don't need the six-year limit. Uh, and what's more, those that are found to be unmeritorious face substantial costs. The claimant faces substantial costs to the Ministry of Defence, which is a clear deterrent. So we've got now a situation in which the MOD can delay evidence in the name of national security and, and evade prosecution against negligence or worse. So, I mean, I've had individual cases, a case of a constituent who came to me who was um, on an exercise with the military, who was uh, hooded, stripped and tortured and then ended up with post-traumatic stress disorder, alcoholism and a, so basically a lifetime of mental health problems that we're still trying to get compensation for. I mean, clearly he would be ruled out in this. There's been a famous case of uh, an army cadet who was sexually abused and by her instructor and she didn't bring this up until she was an adult and again the six-year rule would have meant that case wasn't heard. There was a case of a territorial army officer who was subject over many years of racist abuse and his superiors uh, turned a blind eye, that wouldn't have been case heard. And the cases go on. So I have no hesitation in uh, supporting the amendments from the Lords for the duty of care, for the facility for cases to be reopened with new evidence by the Director of Service Prosecution, uh, the amendment for the facility for armed forces to bring civil claims against the Ministry of Defence. And finally, and crucially, this bill, of course, bans prosecution uh, of, for war crimes after five years, including murder and torture, which is appalling. Uh, of, of, we all know it can take decades to investigate some of these war crimes. We all remember, you know, we know what happened after the Second World War, for instance. And the government, of course, uh, can sit on evidence for years, uh, as has been in a, a particular case in Britain, of the execution of unarmed civilians by British special forces, where they sat on evidence for over a decade. So you know, we can't justify a, a blanket pardon for war crimes uh, and torture after five years of the, them happening. Uh, otherwise, we'll, of course, end up in the International Criminal Court in The Hague. So I very much um, support the uh, amendments for the laws that try to 
make this bill a bit better. But in essence, I've got to say my view is this bill wasn't necessary and it should have been completely scrapped, which is why I voted against it in the first place. But I would urge members, obviously, to vote for the Lord's Amendment that have been put today.